ever get caught setting up your tent in pouring rain? The inside gets soaked and it's miserable. But with this hack, I'm gonna show you how you can turn any freestanding tent into a fly-only pitch so you can keep the inside dry while you're setting up your tent. It's not really raining. Why do you want a fly-only pitch? Well, the primary reason is rain. If you can pitch the fly first, then what you can do is crawl underneath the fly and set up your tent body without getting the tent body wet. If you don't do it this way, the inside of your tent is gonna be a wet mess. Many trekking pole tents can be set up in such a way that it's all in one. So that you set up the tent body and the fly all in one step, keeping the inside dry. That's a huge advantage. But most freestanding tents are made in such a way where you lay out the tent body, configure your poles, pop the poles in, clip the tent body onto the poles, and then you put your fly over the top. That whole time you're doing that, if it's raining out, the inside of your tent is getting wet, and that's a problem. Now there are some manufacturers that design their tents to have a fly-only pitch, and usually that requires a footprint. Big Agnes has a couple models. The Copper Spur and Tiger Wall can both be pitched fly-only, and Cedar Summit has a couple models that have some pretty innovative fly-only pitches. But what if you have a tent from MSR, or Nemo, or REI, or Eureka, or any of the other manufacturers? So here's the solution. It's really simple. All you need is four nylon washers and some zing it or lash it cordage. This is made out of Dyneema. It's ultra strong, lightweight, and most importantly, it's really thin. This is the zing it version, which is 2.2 millimeters in diameter. And it's what I used, it's what I had around the house. The lash it is 1.75 millimeters and might actually be a better option because then you can drill smaller holes into the washers. I got this design from a comment on the video for the review of my MSR Hubba Hubba. And they pointed me to this Project Outbound video where they made uh, basically the same setup but using nylon straps and 3D printed parts. And I thought the idea was brilliant, but I wanted to come up with a simpler design that uses just everyday parts. Most tent pole ends are around six and a half to seven and a half millimeters in diameter. And the holes in the tabs or grommets on the tent body are about seven and a half to eight millimeters. My MSR Hubba Hubba's poles are 6.6 .6 millimeters and the tabs are 7.6 millimeters. I picked up these crazy sized nylon washers from Lowe's. I'll put the size on the screen and in the description below. These washers have an inner diameter of 8.8 millimeters and an outer diameter of 22.4 millimeters. It's important that the inner diameter is smaller than the diameter of your tent pole. My MSR tent pole is nine millimeters in diameter. So it is just a little bigger than the inside diameter of this washer. If the inner diameter is bigger than your tent pole, the washer will slip up during your setup. Also, make sure your washer is wide enough to drill the appropriate size holes in your cordage. Another reason to use the 1.75 millimeter lashet. You can drill smaller holes. So just choose the size that is best for your tent and your poles. My tent specs list the size of the floor as 50 by 84 inches. My tent is a rectangle, but some tents may be tapered at one end, so be careful. I measured the size without the poles. It was pretty close to that 50 by 84 measurement, within an inch. But I wanted to be sure, so I set up my tent with the body and poles without the fly, and measured the outside dimensions of the tent. Again, it was within an inch of the listed specs. I measured lengths of zingit to match each side of the tent. I used the listed specs of the floor and added an inch for the connection tab, a half an inch on each corner. I also added two inches to accommodate the knots at each end. I used 53 inches for the short sides and 87 inches for the long sides. Cut the zingit using sharp scissors. Remember, it's ultra strong. Also, remember to burn the ends so they do not fray and it also makes it easier to pass through the drilled holes on your washers. Next, drill two holes in the washers. The holes need to be at 90 degree angles. I use the 9 ths inch drill bit for my holes.
At this point, you should have the long sides and the short sides cut and four washers, each with two holes at 90 degree angles. Now, poke the cord through the holes and tie an overhand knot. Repeat, making sure you are creating your tent shape and each washer has a long and short cord attached. I attach the longer pieces on one side of the washer and the shorter pieces on the opposite side of the washer to keep the knots out of the way. I don't think this matters too much. After connecting all of the washers, your cordage should form a similar shape to your tent's floor. For my hubba hubba, this is all I needed because the fly has similar tabs as the body. If your tent has a buckle to attach the fly, or is a Nemo and has those Jake's feet, you will need to create some small loops to attach another set of washers to the fly. Now it's time to test your setup. Spread out your cordage in the shape of your tent. Attach your poles to each corner washer. Next, drape the fly over the top and attach it to your pole ends. Now, you can get yourself out of the rain for a few minutes and complete the setup. Lay out the tent body and attach the corners, then attach the ceiling clips to the poles. This takes a little practice, so try to pitch this a few times in your backyard or your basement before you actually need it in the rain. You can leave the washers and cordage attached or switch it out when it's not raining. You can use the same washer mechanism to make a fly-only pitch out of any footprint. Most footprints will have some sort of nylon connection point for the stakes. Just attach your washer to this. Instead of drilling holes at 90 degree angles, I have them more at about 45 degrees, and I put the knots on the same side. This really works well, but there's a couple downsides we need to discuss. First, not everyone carries a footprint. If you're looking for an ultralight solution, the washers and the zingit or lashet will be lighter. Second, if you're laying out your footprint in the rain, that means rain is collecting on its surface. You'll need to wipe it down before putting your tent body up or you risk trapping some moisture between them. Again, probably not a huge deal since your tent should be waterproof, but I want it to be as dry as possible in there. I hope this hack helps you if you're ever caught in the rain. And if you found value in this video, I'd really appreciate it if you click that like button. It really does help this video and my channel quite a bit. And if you want to see other gear reviews and how-tos and outdoor adventures, I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel. That's it for now. I'll see you guys outside. Yeah.